I want to present you our new software Phony, stream matching statistics with multi-genome references. And as the title suggests, we tackle the problem of matching statistics. So what are matching statistics? Given two strings, banana and banana, we want to figure out how fits banana into banana. This looks kind of stupid, but it has applications. If we have the matching statistics, we can compute the maximal exact matches, the MEMS, and then we can use approaches like seed and extend for read alignment. More formally, given a text T and a pattern P, what we want to compute are two arrays R and L such that we know at the i's position of the pattern the longest common prefix with all text positions. Having R and L, for instance, we know at position 2 that um, the string A and A appears in the text at position 5, but there is no occurrence of A N A N appearing in the text. To compute the matching statistics, we can just scan the pattern linearly, and for each pattern position, we query the LCP with all text positions. And then I get the following picture where on the left hand side you see the references and on the right hand side you see the matching statistics. And if you write these numbers in this tabular form you get this table at the beginning. Note that the last reference here just for the A um, is not uniquely defined. You can just take any of these three A's appearing in the text. So, matching statistics is not a new concept. There are already algorithms computing matching statistics. One of them, which is a textbook algorithm, uses the suffix tree, takes n log n bits of space, it, uh, it can be built in, in linear time, and the query is spun up by the pattern length times log sigma, where sigma is the alphabet size and n is the length of the text. Belazugi could improve the space bounds by using the compressed suffix tree. Here we focus on even more compressible versions. We want to work with data structures using just compressed space, namely r log n plus c log square n, where r is the number of runs in the BWT and c is the number of lambda 77 factors which we can do thanks to the R-index and the grammar. The time complexity does not look so compelling, but in practice it's kind of competitive. But here we focus on a really compressed space. And why that? Because in our application we take a text that contains multiple of chromosome 19 samples, and we want to scale the text up to 1000 of them. And here we want to construct the compressed suffix tree, um, you can see on the right hand side that the memory requirements scales linearly to the number of sequences we store in T. But for our machine, for our experiments here, we use just 64 gigs of RAM and therefore we could only index about 64 sequences. Note that uh, chromosome 19 is about 60 megabytes if it's stored in ASCII. And here our CST implementation is the CST SCT3 of the SDSL Lite. Now it lo looks that space is important, but can we do better? Uh, yes, there is Moni, it's a solution presented by Rossi and others, which got into Recomp this year. It uses exactly this uh, R-index approach, where the R-index is built with a big BWT, and it needs also auxiliary data structures for the matching statistics. But you can see on the right hand side in the plot that the memory requirements scale roughly logarithmic. And also note that the x-axis is in log scale and we keep that for the rest of the talk. Now, what does Moni do? So Moni is an augmented R index and uh, for computing some matching statistics it needs two passes on the pattern. The so first pass it scans the pattern from right to left backwards 
and just do um, the standard FM index backward search for determining R, so our, our references. Then it computes the lengths, and for that it scans now the text, so the pattern from left to right and simultaneously R, such that it can compute the lengths by an LCP query of T at the position Ri and P at the position I. But because it's a two-pass algorithm, it needs to keep P and the reference array R in RAM. And for large P, we want to stream the pattern and the matching statistics, meaning we want to read P in a stream fashion and directly output the matching statistics without storing or buffering them into RAM. So our idea is to compute L directly with a grammar index. And to show you our idea, we use some simplifications in the talk. So you see on the left hand side, not the R index, but a plain BWT. And I only show you how to compute the L array. For computing R, we use the suffix array, um, which is kind of trivial. But for the R index, we don't have the suffix array available, but only suffix array entries at the run boundaries. But that still works. Now, what we do is first we do the classic backward search steps like in the FM index. So for computing L, we start with the rightmost character in P, which is a A, and we take in F the A interval, which has length 3 because there are 3 A's in the text. So the answer is already 1 because A appears. Then the next character is n, and we take in this a interval um, the first n. We could just take any n and then continue with the backward search step. And we end up at an a, which is good because we want to have an a. So whenever we do a backward search and we succeed, we can increment l by 1. And next, we want to again do a backward search step, but this time we expect it to have an N, but we end up with a D. Now what to do next is to figure out how we can continue with the backward search step. But for that, let us assume that we are in BWT at the position Q, text position Q, where we had this mismatching, and we could match P up until position i. Now for continuing, we look at the closest neighbors of q in the BWT that have the letter n, basically the letter we want to match. And let's say these neighbors are called q prime and q prime prime. Now what we do is that is that we do an LCP query at position q prime with p starting at position i and then the same with q prime prime and then we take the position that has a longer lcp value in this case q prime has a lcp of length one it matches the a at the beginning while p, uh, q prime prime just has a d and there is no uh, matching at all so we take the q prime and continue with q prime so we arrive at this n and then we can already write the in the L array uh, the letter 2 because we have matched one character, namely the A, and because we have already also matched the N in the BWT, it's 1 plus 1 is 2, so we have already matched two characters. And if we continue our backward search steps, like here, uh, where we take the first N because it's uh, the first N in the BWT, and uh, find an a, then we can increment the next l value by 1, so it gives us 3, and do again the backward search step, but now again we end up at uh, different characters than we expected. We expected a b, but end up at a d. But this time it's more easier because we want a b and there is just one b in the BWT, uh, so we have just to answer one LCP query. This gives us two 
characters. So the answer is one for the B matched in the BWT plus the two characters for the LCP, which is three. Now what I promised you is that we want to stream P, so actually we don't have P available for the LCP queries. Luckily we can just use the previous text position, namely the text position of the red arrow for the LCP comparison. So we use two different text positions for the LCP and this is a special kind of LCP which is called LCE. And LCE stands for longest common extension. What we want to do is that we want to compute the longest common extension with a grammar. Uh, here we used repair combined with prefix free parsing and a format for random access on SLPs. And SLPs are straight line programs, which are special kind of grammars. And in particular, our repair plus PFP is an SLP. The nice thing is that Moni has already uh, this kind of grammar for random access on T. So what's left is that we need to add the LSE functionality. To, underst to understand that, we briefly review what prefix free parsing means in the sense of a grammar. The idea is that we factorize T context sensitively, so that same substrings have nearly the same factorization like S is factorized just by one um, factor. Then we build the grammar on each factor independently. And then we take the root of each of these grammars and glue these root strings together to form a string of roots. And on that we build again the same grammar such that we have a two-tier grammar. What we now do is uh, as e-query. Uh, as e-query means that we want to compute the longest common prefix of the suffixes starting at the position p1 and p2. And for that we traverse from the grammar root downwards until we had hit the character level and then we do character-wise comparison. This works, but it's slow. It's slower than Moni. And you can see that on the right hand side in the plot that the more sequences we index, the faster we get. And that's because the more likely, the less likely the backward search fails. And in this plot, we measured the time needed for computing the matching statistics for one of 10 chromosome 19 sequences that are not in T and we just took the average time. So to get faster LSE queries, we use the following properties that whenever we reach a factor boundary, then we hit that factory boundary at the same time due to the prefix free parsing property. And then we stop comparing character by character, but now compare on the above levels node label by node label and we climb up the tree until hitting a mismatching node label pair and then we go down again again comparing on the same level until again finding a mismatch and then go down and go down until we hit the character level again and in the character level we finally find the mismatching character pair interestingly this works better it's even faster than Moni for 1000 sequences. You can see here a little bit more chittering, but that's because we zoomed in in the y-axis. So for querying, um, we get better expectations in the time when the um, when t is large, but for the construction we're always better than Moni. And that's because Moni needs auxiliary data structures called thresholds for the two pass algorithm. So it needs the R index, the thresholds, and the grammar. Well, we can just cope with the R index and the grammar. These thresholds take significantly time and space during the construction. In particular, if T gets large, as you can see in the left hand and right hand side plots. 
You can also see in the left hand side plot that uh, the compressed suffix tree also needs a lot of time for the construction. Now, when we look at the queries regarding the space bounds, we can also see that there is a large gap between Moni and Phony. That is because Moni needs to keep these thresholds in RAM and also the pattern and its reference array R, which we don't need in Phony because we can just stream everything. Now, this gap looks kind of constant. Um, it's not constant, but it scales with with the pattern lengths. But here we, in, in our evaluations up to now, we always took the same pattern lengths. What we can do is that we can take prefixes of the patterns. So let us fix t to be 64 sequences. This is also the maximum number of sequences we could index with the CST on our machine. So CST is on the red hand plot again. We take our 10 patterns, but this time in the x-axis it's not um, scaled by the number of sequences in the text, but for the pattern prefix. So 100 means that it's the same experiment as before, but if we take 25, this means that we take 25% of the pattern 20, uh, uh, prefix which has the length of 25% of the pattern and do the matching statistics on that. We can see that uh, the CST and phony are kind of constant. It's just a very insignificant increase, but for Moni it's more considerably. Finally, what I've shown you here is a new way to compute matching statistics with highly repetitive text collections, like for pangenomes. It stands on the shoulders of giants, which is the R-index, a space-efficient construction of the R-index, the big BWT, and PFP grammars. Our contributions are that we now can do LZ queries on the PFP grammars. Unfortunately, we are theoretically inferior to Moni, but in practice we are competitive, especially if P is large because we can stream P so we don't have to store it in RAM. And if large parts of P occur in the text, then we only have a few LZE queries and also for the time bounds we are kind of competitive. So thanks for listening.